My engine was damaged. My oil pressure went to zero. Temperature went to maximum. All of the coolant came out right across my windshield. So I knew there was only one choice. I was 11 years old. And as I describe it, I had a love affair with an airplane. What cost it? I have no idea. One day I just wound up loving airplanes. It was almost as if I was born to fly, really. Harold Brown had one dream, to be a military pilot. But for an African-American boy in 1936, that was out of the question. Since World War I, black men had been prohibited from enlisting and training as pilots. But Harold was raised in a family who taught him that every dream was worth chasing. I always had the belief that everything would change. And that's what I said, yeah, but by the time I'm ready, everything would change. And that's precisely the way it happened. In December 1938, President Roosevelt unveiled the Civilian Pilot Training Program. And for the first time, a select number of African-American men were given a chance to fly. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you this important bulletin from the United Press. September 1st, 1939, Germany attacks Poland. Hitler's all-out attack on Poland makes the long-dreaded European war a certainty. For two and a half years, Harold and the rest of America carried on as usual. Then, under executive order, the U.S. Army Air Corps activated the first squadron of all black pilots. They became the Tuskegee Airmen. The big news was that I could apply and I could take my shot at it, and at least I would get a chance. That same summer, a 16-year-old Harold took a job as a soda jerk with just one thing in mind. I saved up $35. And I took those $35 and bought me five flying lessons. And on the first flight, I was sloppy all over the sky. But by the fifth lesson, I was feeling quite comfortable. And I said, oh man, this is really great. Hey, yeah, I'm flying an airplane. Then the war came to America. declared war in Japan and joined the Allied powers in Europe. And when Harold graduated from high school in June 1942, he took the Tuskegee Flight School entrance exam and passed. I was selected, I'm in. That was my dream. I was gonna become a pilot, crash? No, I'm not gonna crash. Uh, I'm invincible, nothing will happen to me. Harold earned his wings and the rank of second lieutenant in May 1944. He was shipped to Ramatelli, Italy, where he joined other Tuskegee Airmen of the 332nd Fighter Group, a segregated all-black unit known only by the Red Rudder on their P-51 Mustangs. The bomber boys never heard of it. All of a sudden, they knew that a new fighter group had come in, and they had red tail. And they said, who are these red tail guys? but it was their performance in the air that stood out the most. We had the best record in terms of losing bombers to enemy aircraft of any other fighter group in the 15th Air Force. All of a sudden, they said, boy, these are the greatest guys in the world, not knowing 
who was flying those airplanes. They started calling us the Red Tail Angels. Then they start requesting us, who's our escort today? Is it the Red Tails? No, it's not the Red Tails. What, it's not the Red Tails? They wanted the Red Tails. On March 14, 1945, Harold and 19 other Red Tails took off from Linz, Austria on a strafing mission. If you see something, shoot it up. And we looked and we said, look what we got. Locomotives all up and down, the steam coming from them. Just like throwing a fox in a briar patch. And we had one heck of a day. 